be as much as the city wants. But as Stu Nicholson reports, the city's willing to take whatever it can get. $25.9 million. That's what it'll take to build the North Freeway, pending the outcome of lawsuits and other protests against the controversial highway. But after being told by the U.S. Senate that kind of money will be tough to come by, the city told the Senate it'll settle for 12 to 15 million. But how far will 12 to 15 million dollars go? City Hall won't speculate on whether that means a North Freeway that can be used by cars and trucks. We will just start down that listing of, uh, of small segment of projects and do as many as we can with whatever dollars are appropriated. If it's 13 million, we'll start at number one and keep going down the list until the 13 million runs out. If it's 15 million, we'll keep going. Uh, and this is what Suttle expects to do with the federal dollars if they indeed are appropriated. Grading from Lake Street to Binney, construction of a trunk storm sewer line, building a bridge over the freeway at Lake Street, and open some side streets to new accesses. But all of this hinges on whether the Senate and House can agree on how much money to spend. They're about $200 million apart on their respective highway bills, and they still must get the final budget-minded approval of President Reagan. Stu Nicholson, Newswatch 7 Update. To drive on that freeway or any freeway, it looks like you'll have to siphon another few cents out of your pocket for each gallon of gas you pump in your car. OPEC is changing its prices. The oil cartel announced in Geneva today its first unified price structure in over two years. Kuwait's oil minister says the 13 oil exporting countries agreed on a price range of $34 to $38 a barrel. Now this will mean a reduction in prices some have been charging, but an increase of $2 a barrel for Saudi Arabia, which produces about half of OPEC's output. The changes will take effect Sunday. They will affect not only gas prices, but some heating oil prices as well. Higher oil prices may be affecting car sales. The nation's third largest automaker, Chrysler, lost over $149 million in the June through September quarter. But that's better than Chrysler's performance in the last year's third quarter, when the company lost nearly $490 million. That slump in auto sales is costing some Lincoln workers their jobs. 102 production workers at the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company will be laid off by next Tuesday. That brings to 270, the number idled at the company's Lincoln plant. Goodyear spokesmen say the auto replacement market is the only market not down for Goodyear, but it isn't keeping enough to handle the whole plant. Now that plant hopes to rehire some of the workers when business picks up a little bit. And meanwhile, some workers in Omaha, Carol, are getting another chance. Omaha will hire back those police recruits fired last month when they failed to pass recruit exams. They'll be hired by the personnel department and will be paid while they're tutored in note-taking and reading comprehension skills. In all, five recruits, four of them black, have been offered the second chance. City Personnel Director Gary Trotman told Newswatch 7 the recruits will then have to go through the entire police testing procedure before they'll be put into an upcoming it's hard for recruit each class. It's candidate expressed an interest in retesting for the police division. And it's awful hard right now to find a job that you're only going to be there possibly three months. And each of the candidates had families, and we felt that it uh, uh, was a good faith effort on our part to do something like that. Troutman says he expects to hear an answer from the recruits by next uh, week and says they're enthusiastic about the offer. Just ahead, a look at previous special sessions of the Nebraska Unicam. More in our series aboard the Amtrak Zephyr. World Radio's gigantic once-a-year warehouse clearance sale is going on now. The action is fast and furious as people are rushing in to save from 20 to 60 percent and more on name brand stereo, car stereo, and video equipment. Discontinued models, floor samples, closeouts, one of a kinds, everything goes. But hurry, at these prices, it's strictly first come, first serve. So run in today before we run out. Now through Sunday at World Radio's warehouse, 34th and West Broadway, Council Bluffs. Now open in Council Bluffs, Rod Roden's all-new Town & Country Auto Center. At Town & Country, we have the widest selection of imported and domestic makes and models of new cars available at one location in the Midwest. Right now, Town & Country is liquidating the inventory of two previous dealers. Many of these cars qualify for up to $1,000 direct factory cash rebate, in addition to Town & Country's special discounted prices. Hurry to the all-new Town & Country Auto Center, just seconds from downtown Omaha, 35th and Broadway, Council Bluffs.
Ask the energy experts at Fraser Sure Camp how you can reduce your heating bill this winter with their General Electric products. The GE Weathertron heat pump warms your home so efficiently you can save up to 60% on your heating bill. And the high-efficiency GE gas furnace can save you up to 17% on your gas bill. Call 330-3400 and find out how Fraser Sure Camp can help you save money with efficient GE equipment. You'll be more comfortable with Fraser Sure Camp. They've been in business for over 50 years. It looks like it's happening again. Say what? That peculiar madness. Don't you be telling me how to breathe, man. What? That can only happen here. It's Saturday night. I jam. I jam. Hosted by Julian Bond. So you're Julian Bond. Music by Tom Waits. Whatever it was, it looked really slick. It's Saturday night. It's Saturday night. Thursday following Nightline. Nebraska's legislature begins its special session tomorrow, trying to cut state spending and avoid a tax hike. But Capitol Bureau Chief Doug Parrott checks on the history behind those special gatherings, and here's what he found. If some of these faces seem out of place, it's because this was the start of the last special session in Nebraska history back in 1978. All told, 19 special sessions have been called, and the subject matter has often been unique. For example, in 1952, senators were called back to ban the feeding of raw garbage to hogs, and thus avert a boycott of Nebraska pork. The 1960 legislature was recalled to enact a constitutional amendment which gave state senators a pay raise. And this 1978 session primarily dealt with imposing budget lids on local governments. Perhaps the foremost authority on special sessions is current speaker Richard Marvel of Hastings. The 30-year-plus veteran is about to take part in his 10th special session, and admits he's not very fond of them. Marvel feels these sessions are unproductive, mainly because they deal with critical issues while under severe time restrictions. And he says the two usually don't combine to make good laws. Now, there are a lot of people that say, well, you could move faster. That's not the function of a, of a legislative body, as far as I'm concerned, is to see how fast you can move. So it's, you're supposed to deliberate. And it's hard to deliberate when you're trying to see how fast you can go. In so, fact, it's impossible. Perhaps the one big unknown question about this special session is just how long it's going to take and how much it's going to end up costing taxpayers. In 78, the last special session, the final tab was $21,000, or just over $2,200 a day. But with inflation, it's going to be more like $25,000 to $3,000 a day. And that could start adding up if the session gets into too long a time. Doug Parrott, Newswatch 7 Update, Lincoln. Ted, another major issue faces the Unicam in its next session. Nebraska is the only state in the country that is currently looking at legislation to abolish the death penalty. A bill that would replace capital punishment with a 30-year mandatory sentence is expected to come before the legislature in January. Today, supporters of that bill heard former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark say the real question behind capital punishment is whether we are a nation of killers. He adds the bill Nebraska cons considering is not the answer is not the answer, but a first step. Countries that believe in peace, that believe in democracy, that believe in freedom have abolished capital punishment. How I would love to see the heartland of America, Nebraska, lead this country toward its abolition. Right now, there are over 800 people in death row in the United States, 12 in Nebraska. There once was a time when Americans could catch a train going just about anywhere. Now, though, with Amtrak, the choices are limited. In Omaha, there's only one choice, the San Francisco Zephyr. Tonight, in part three of a series by reporter Jerry Fannin and photographer Julie Baldwin, we find out who is aboard the Zephyr. Southern Wyoming, barren, desolate, but yet a vital part of America. The part of America that can only be seen from the window of a train. The Zephyr is about halfway home now, midway between yesterday's Chicago and tomorrow's Oakland. The train is running flat out at this point, perhaps at 70 or 80 miles an hour between stops. The Zephyr has a schedule to keep, as do the passengers aboard it. Yet if you're riding the train to begin with, you can't be in too much of a hurry to get there. Certainly a be better way to sightsee than fly. You can't see anything from an airplane. I will ride it every opportunity I can, I have. Wherever I go, it's by train. If I can get there by train, 
that's the way I go. I think uh, the nicest thing are the accommodations. And the roadbed's been quite good. A few spots that weren't so great, but generally speaking, it's been very comfortable. Uh, the food was a little disappointment this time because I've been on other trips where the dining service was first rate. Aboard the train, there is time. Time for that good book, time for curling up, and time for some good old-fashioned daydreaming. Americans are taking the time to take the train these days. This summertime Zephyr run was crowded. If that's the case, then why so many fears for Amtrak's demise? Sadly, some think Washington simply wants out of the railroad business. The government might argue that expenses are just too high, even with the increase in ridership. Amtrak may or may not survive in its present form, and the passengers sense that uncertainty. Many said they took the train now, fearing another chance may not come along. With photographer Julie Baldwin aboard the Zephyr, Jerry Fannin, Newswatch 7 Update. If you think Americans are not riding the trains these days, just try to make a reservation. From experience and from what we've heard from those who have tried, it's difficult to get through the Amtrak's toll-free reservation number. Usually, you'll get a busy signal or you'll just get put on hold. The best recommendation is to either call at odd hours or contact the Omaha Amtrak station. And by the way, you can see the final part of Aboard the Zephyr tomorrow night, as well as a half-hour special on the train trip this Sunday at 5 p.m. here on 7 TV. Just ahead, meteorologist Rob Dickinson explains what an upper-level disturbance really is. And the Halloween weekend forecast. Come to the giant warehouse removal sale at Nebraska Furniture Mart and get in on Microwave Mania. Hot Point's dual power microwave is only $229. This beauty with temperature and power level selector is $269. A deluxe microwave with digital readout is only $339. Get Hot Point's counter saver microwave at a special low price plus a $50 cash rebate from Hot Point. Super savings store wide during the warehouse removal sale at Nebraska Furniture Mart, Omaha. In the corner of your eye, from the reaches of your imagination, his domain is Thingsville. He is the thing. Capes, hoods, wigs, disguises, hair coloring. Ah, Halloween at Thingsville. A favorite time for me. Liquid latex, beards, fake hands and feet, and something for everyone. Over 200 varieties of masks. Of course, that's just if you need them. <laughs> the thing knows that Thingsville is in Council Bluffs Midlands Mall, the Centrum, and Gateway Gallery Mall in Lincoln. The last thing your cattle need on a day like this is a tank full of ice. If your watering system doesn't do the job now, you're in for a long winter. At times like these, a Ritchie Fountain's reliable heating system makes a difference. Big-throated valves dish out water even in the dead of winter. And heavy galvanized steel construction resists corrosion and cattle abuse year after year. Put in a Ritchie now. Then relax. Ritchie waters them right. At Hinky Dinky Supermarkets, we stand behind everything we sell, and that's a promise. It's always been that way. Even when we started, we said we want our customers to be happy with everything they buy in this store. If a woman buys a turkey from us and she comes back the day after Thanksgiving with a bag of bones and says she didn't like it, we'll give her money back or give her another turkey. That's the way we do business at Hinky Dinky. We stand behind everything we sell, and that's a promise. It looks like creditors of the state's largest home construction company will get only 36 cents on the dollar for money owed them. That's if the settlement between CSI and its creditors are signed by both sides. A lump sum will be put in a trust fund by CSI, then creditors will sign 600 lien releases, covering $1.5 million in bills CSI owes. The attorney representing the creditors claims this is probably as equitable a settlement as we can get. It doesn't seem like late October here in the studio tonight, does it? No, it's so warm it's here, but hot. it's going to get chilly outside. <laughs>
Yes, it'll be turning chilly a little bit for the weekend, then maybe a warm up early next week. But overall, I, I hate to say it, but we have to throw in clouds and showers for tomorrow. And it's all due to a piece of paper, which I'll be showing you in just a moment. But currently, Omaha has partly cloudy skies at 63 degrees. Lincoln's partly cloudy at 62. The dew point's relatively high at 53 degrees. The relative humidity is at 70%. Winds are blustery from the south at 16 miles per hour, gusting up to 26. And the barometer is rising at 29.74 inches. We get many maps here at the weather station, 24 hours a day and this is the map where I have put in the cloudiness and showers for tomorrow. If you'll notice in the monitor we do have an area that's shaded in and what we have is exactly an upper level disturbance. Sounds like a catchphrase but we'll show you even more. Now let's take a look at the computer graphics and you'll see exactly what's going on. Have you ever ridden in an octopus at an amusement park? You can go around in a circle but the cab itself can spiral around too. Well, we have this type of thing going on in the upper atmosphere right now, and since it's counterclockwise flow, it kind of acts like a low pressure system. That in itself presents the possibility of showers and even a thunder shower possibly tomorrow. We have a cold front also coming in from the west, and this has been driving all the southerly winds, the windy conditions in our direction, giving the mild temperatures around our area rel relatively warm just to the west of us. But overall, as the cold front comes in for tomorrow, it's going to present us with the possibility of showers and the cloudiness. It all wraps into a cold weekend ahead. Now, on the high temperatures for today, it was very warm just to the west of us. Now, we were generally in the 70s, but in the southwestern corner of the state, Imperial warmed up to 83 degrees. And this warm air would try and move in our direction, but it all depends on how much cloudiness we have for tomorrow. With mostly cloudy skies, the temperatures are going to stay on the mild side. On the Almanac today, we did warm up to our third Indian summer day of a high of 66 degrees, and that was after our overnight low of 49 degrees. Well, we do have some things coming up. In fact, quickly, we'll show you the forecast map, hopefully, for tomorrow. There are advisories that have been setting out across the Rockies, and we'll be seeing this coming up in a couple of moments. But uh, across the Pacific Northwest, the moisture has been coming inland, and that's been presenting travelers' advisories, especially across the Cascades and also in the Central Rockies. And then finally, if you don't like that, on the foothills of Colorado, they have high wind warnings. Now, the forecast map for tomorrow shows that frontal system coming right on in. It'll be presenting rain across a good part of the Dakotas. We'll also have snow, very possible, across the Nebraska Panhandle and also the Black Hills of South Dakota. Here's our forecast for tonight, variably cloudy, breezy, and mild. There will be a slight chance of showers and a low of 51 degrees. Then tomorrow, cloudy, breezy, turning cooler. There will be a good chance of showers and a high of 62 degrees. Then for tomorrow night, cloudy with a chance of showers and cold, a low of 38. Then Saturday, partly cloudy, windy and colder, a high of 55 degrees. Chances of the rain, 20% late tonight, 50% tomorrow, then 40% tomorrow evening. You know, I don't think I would mind a little bit of snow tonight, you know that? You? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'd like it to snow right here in the studio. <laughs> but unfortunately, that can't happen. But if it did, you could win a 5-horsepower, 23-inch snapper snow thrower. Actually, all you have to do, and very quickly, on the back of a envelope or a postcard, put the guess for the first official amount of snow here in Omaha on or after November 1st, and you really have a very short time to do it because all those entries have to be in midnight Saturday. <laughs> oh, it happens soon. I'd like it to snow <laughs> right now. Thank you, sir. Sweden tonight says it will not give the Soviet Union permission to rescue its beached submarine until Moscow explains what it's doing in the restrictive Swedish waters. Tonight, Swedish minesweepers and torpedo boats still guard the Soviet sub that ran aground yesterday near Sweden's main Baltic naval base. Earlier today, Swedish officials boarded the Soviet sub, but when they talked to the Russians, the sub commander and his political officer argued over what to do. Salvage workers are now trying to refloat the submarine. Next on Sports, the Mavs and the Bisons meet head on. And a warm welcome for the new world baseball champion. going up on the new fall TV season and nothing gets you into it like TV Guide. Pick up the new issue today. They're wheeling, they're dealing. 
their Tim O'Neilling at Tim O'Neill Chevrolet, the home of the truck in Council Bluffs. Come see why the experienced professionals at Tim O'Neill Chevrolet are trying a little harder and going a little farther to give you the very best deal possible. Tim O'Neill Chevrolet, home of the truck. Visit the experienced professionals now. Home of the truck. Tim O'Neill Chevrolet, Lake Manawa Exit, Council Bluffs. Petroselli, 40% below retail. Hardy Amy's, 40% below retail. Nino Cerruti, 40% below retail. Ernesto Bellini, 40% below retail. Only Rothschilds offers you this kind of quality in suits, sport coats, slacks, and accessories. Compare our prices, and you'll never pay retail again. It's like having an uncle in the business. Some high school football tonight. The regular season rapidly growing to a close now. Postseason playoff bursts were the object of affection in high school football this evening. Three of the top five teams in the state saw action, and Ross Sternstrom has a report on the Creighton Prep Millard South and Burke Ron Colley games. Creighton Prep looked impressive early against Millard South. Quarterback Pat Raleigh spots Steve Masadas across the middle for a 40 yard touchdown. The Junior Jays led 7 to nothing after the first quarter. The Indians' offense just couldn't get anything going. After recovering a Millard South fumble, Prep marched 20 yards in five plays, capped off by this touchdown run by Jeff Hardick. The defending state champ scored once again when Steve Mositas took the ball 35 yards for his second touchdown of the night. Creighton Prep went on to win the game 35 to 15. The Junior Jays, however, are still not assured of a playoff berth. Meanwhile, here at Kinnick Stadium, second rain, Burke was cruising to victory over Ron Colley. Burke led 21 to seven in the third quarter when quarterback Jeff Henningsen passed the ball to Todd Schuth to give the second ranked Bulldogs a 21 point lead. Burke's defense was equally impressive late in the third quarter. This pass was picked off by Tim Krupa to give Burke the ball at the Ron Colley 35. The second leading rusher in the state, Victor Brakefield, had another superb game. The senior ran for 222 yards, breaking the school rushing record. Burke's final score came when Henningsen hit Brian Schaefer right on the goal line. Burke wins 34 to 7. The Bulldogs capture the District 3 title and qualify for the state playoffs. Ross Sternstrom, Newswatch 7 Sports Update. Couple other scores in Central. They are in the playoffs now with a big win over TJ. Gross beat Brian 28 to 12. Nothing on that Lincoln Northeast Millard North score. For now, UNO's postseason playoff hopes don't extend past this Saturday. The Mavs play at North Dakota State, who has already wrapped up the North Central Conference title. The Bison are 6-0, but last year they had a good record, and UNO knocked them off. Can history repeat itself? Well, Sandy Buda sure hopes so, but he's aware of just how good the Bison are. 346 yards a game rushing. Uh, they're a, a superior football team. We're going to have to put it all together to have a chance of winning up there. You look at statistics, and you look at common foes they beat uh, uh, South Dakota U on the road in the dome last week, 43 to 7. We lost 17 16. So that makes them look like a 35 point favorite, but it's Halloween. Uh, anything can happen. We're going up there dressed as goblins in football uniforms, and maybe we can trick them and it'll be their treat. They just may get them too. And given the fact that Nebraska beat Kansas State by 46 points while Kansas took the Wildcats by three, it's no wonder the Huskers are a four touchdown favorite in this week's Husker Jayhawk tussle. However, Tom Osborne is still amazed at the spread, and he hopes that this easy game attitude doesn't spread to his team. After all, Osborne can show you some impressive Kansas highlights, especially the play of Jayhawk quarterback Frank Sire. He can throw the ball long, or he can throw it short. And the word is that Kansas has a whole bunch of top-notch skill people. Then there's a guy named Dino Bell, the younger brother of Kerwin Bell. Kerwin is out with an injury, but Dino is filling in admirably. So, given the fact Kansas has a big defense and an offense that is coming on, the 5-2 and two Jayhawks could be pesky. Then again, Kansas hasn't scored in two years on Nebraska, and we were told they had good skill people then. So, chances are Nebraska will win easily, maybe 35-7 to seven or so. Of course, the World Series of 1981 is history, but the Dodgers are still savoring their impressive come-from-behind championship. Some 10,000 Dodger fans camped out at L.A. International Airport to welcome home their baseball heroes. It was the Dodgers' first World Series title in 16 years. It was all the more sweet since they beat the Yankees in four straight after falling behind two games to none. Meanwhile, over in that Yankee corner, George Steinbrenner said today, Changes are going to start soon. No doubt Reggie Jackson will be among the first wave to leave. In fact, right now, George is just sharpening up that old axe. What was that score? Lincoln Northeast Millard, you needed? Yeah. That was Lincoln one? Northeast 27, Millard North 6. All right. Thank you so much for that sports tip. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Stay with us. Right now, for a limited time.
time. Husker Dodge, the Dodge store, can offer you 13.75% APR financing. 13.75% on Omnis, on K-Cars, on imports, on trucks. 13.75% on hundreds of new 81s and 82s. Use the Dodge savings certificate to reduce interest rates, to reduce monthly payments as a down payment, or as cash in your pocket. It's your choice. 13.75% APR financing right now at Husker Dodge, the Dodge store. Modern day retailers can now own an electronic cash register for as low as $895. It's the new Suita L25 series. The Suita 2610 is programmed for three departments. The Suita 2620 can be programmed for eight departments. Both machines have automatic tax and change computation and self-balancing. Eliminate overcharges and wrong entries with its built-in error warning system. Protect your profits by eliminating costly errors with the Suita L25 series, starting at just $895. Only at Omaha Cash Register, Saddle Creek and Dodge. Ring us up. It's a Roper sale, featuring Roper self-cleaning gas ranges with waist-high broilers. Roper self-cleaning ranges also feature a clock control that can start and stop the oven automatically. And of course, energy-saving pilotless ignition. For clean, efficient cooking, think Roper gas ranges. See the Roper self-cleaning gas range and other good old reliable Roper appliances at that bargain-loving Nebraska Furniture Mart, 700 South 72nd Street. When you see a field of corn standing this tall, this straight, this strong, the secret lies down deep in the roots with a rootworm insecticide that won't quit. A maze. A maze stays through heavy spring rains, even on early planted corn. It stays to shut out rootworm through the critical late hatch. A maze. It doesn't stop working until the rootworms do. Now, here's an example of a failure to communicate. Oklahoma Governor George Nye was the official dinner guest of the European nation of Liechtenstein recently. Nye said he noticed two flags were flying, Liechtenstein's and Japan's. The latter, he was told, had been raised in his honor. But I'm the governor of Oklahoma, he said, more or less in those words, to which his host replied, in effect, Oh, we thought you said Yokohama. Ah, so. <laughs> Up next on ABC's Nightline, a look at the public schools in trouble, a focus on the Michigan schools. And tomorrow morning at 6.30 on Good Morning, 7 TV News Director Ray Deffa talks about the TV news business. We'll see you. Good night. Good night. The preceding news program was recorded earlier this evening.